What's up, everybody? Welcome to the good, the bad, and the ugly with this week in review of AEW Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. First off, this is what they're doing right. Chris Statlander. He's got a couple of promos here. Turning heel. I actually like this. She's been stagnant for far too long. And it, it gives the shallow AEW women's division a new look. Stokely, they haven't been able to find a home for him for a long time. He fits in well here. It's not overly funny or anything like that, but they're doing good. And I personally don't really like Willow, but Statlander, she's talented. And the fans do like Willow. So this is working for them. And if they can do something to give Statlander a push, elevate her to that next level, that works. So let's see where this goes. And they don't have any top tier managers really in AEW. You can say whatever you want to about the Don Callis family. He's got a lot of heat. He can count as one. I'll give you that. But it's not Paul Heyman. It's not Bobby Heenan. It's not Jim Cornette. It's not Jimmy Hart. It's not Gary Hart. We can go down a whole list. So if they can get Stokely and manufacture him into being some kind of a manager, so be it. Maybe he can start quote-unquote being that guy. He did help MJF get the title, and then the firm storyline was dropped. So whatever we can do here, it's a plus. So I got to give AEW a little bit of credit. This has some traction. So I'm fine with that. You can see here, uh, them pushing Renee out the way, uh, being heelish to the uh, 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 interviewers. That's something everybody does in AEW. They don't even let Tony Schiavone talk. So it is what it is. But anyway, moving on to the next segment here. Speaking of heel managers, Don Callis, do you really think Trent Beretta is on the level of talent as everybody else? He, he's a misfit. I don't think this is going to work. Um, I get it. You're trying to push somebody new. Look at those shoes, by the way. What are those? Anyway, this is just going to fail. This is a bad or an ugly segment, as you will. Uh, Trent Beretta, I, I just don't get it. Back to good. Tony Storm, always on top of her game. Luther has never been more important in his life. Look at the facials. I'll just let this play a little bit. just fantastic in the back. Mariah May has just been able to play both of Tony Storm's characters pretty well. This was funny here. <laughs> he didn't even bother to read the screen that it was on Rampage. I mean, he's supposed to be a journalist, right? Technically. Also, this right here. They're doing good when it comes to these vignettes, old school style vignettes of introducing characters, but then again these guys have been around forever Josh Woods I remember him getting a decent pop last time Tony Nese, like they said, has been around 20 years okay, you're just now going to push him you're kind of burying yourself when you do this you've had a guy that's been around 20 years and you admit that and you think everybody's going to throw money at him. You say that in your own promo, but then you haven't pushed him. You're kind of saying that you've dropped the ball this whole time in your company. So you're admitting that you screwed up in your own vignette. Explain that to me. 
And what they end up doing a lot of times, as good as this vignette is, and they're good with vignettes, and as, as professional looking as this is, they'll debut, they'll do three things, and then they'll be gone. The audio on this is terrible. It sounds like they're filming out of a silo. And aren't these the guys that eat ass? And then they switched out the third guy? So you show them off, they have them talking crap, and then Luchasaurus comes and just demolishes them. They do not explain at all why he's doing this. And if you watch Luchasaurus's last match, which I have coming up next, he gets a lock of his hair cut off from uh, Swerve. You think that they could call back or mention that, as we see this here. So, you have him face the world champion. He kicks out of the old finisher, because Swerve is really building up his new finisher. This is actually a trick that wrestlers have taught, get a finish over, and then have somebody kick out of that finisher so you can actually introduce a new finisher. This allows you to build up your matches from 8 minutes to 10 minutes to 12 minutes, so you can go longer on in matches. It's the oldest trick in the game, so they all become secondary finishers so you can create false finishes. And the best people rotate their finishers around so you never know which coming. Gunther does that the best. He's got like five different finishes. So anyway, they don't explain what happens and now you can't link your shows together. Dynamite, Rampage, and all that don't go together so it doesn't make sense and then why would people watch? Maybe they could get their ratings up to 700,000 across all shows if they did that. Back to a good. Swerve, look at the background right there. Excellent presentation on the champion. They've repackaged him. He was a little slow coming out of the gates and they're repackaging him better. Another right there. Great background. He's doing fantastic recently. You know, he started off hot chasing the belt, dropped down, he's getting hot again. So they are saving their champion so his run isn't a complete failure. Um, like somebody else who uh, is a little pretty butterfly cowboy, but we won't name names there. And this right here, is this supposed to be the reason why Luchasaurus is going crazy? I don't know. Maybe mention it. Once again, we've covered that. It just doesn't make sense when you don't have callbacks, right? Eric Bischoff covered this in uh, his uh, podcast recently, right? Make your callbacks make sense. This also, fantastic match. Something that Dynamite does well, Collision does well, Rampage sometimes does well, because it's a B show. They will have a match by itself with no story. This is why their AEW pay-per-views are fantastic, is because there's no stories really running through the pay-per-views. It's just the matches. But the problem here is no selling. Each of these spots were no-sell spots. Will Ospreay could be the best wrestler in the world if he would just slow down a little bit on the no-selling. You can't do this crap and take a shot and then jump right back up and no-sell. It completely buries yourself in the opponent and then it takes us out of the match. I know a lot of these people today, these marks that watch wrestling, think, oh, it's great because we spam moves. It's not. If you no-sell, nobody cares. Here, Hook is finally paired with somebody who talks great. These two match their energy very well. Hook could do well to learn from another guy just like him. So, this might actually work. A positive. This is interesting. I pointed it out just because Brian Cage has six years left on his deal. They're gonna have to work him unless they just plan on paying him for no reason. So you're gonna see a lot of him on TV. Listen to the crowd. He's pretty over. At least in this town. We're going to do something with this guy? Now back to the bad. Watch Tony's face. That goofy smile.
you've got an angry guy yelling at you and you're just smiling. But remember, you fired CM Punk for doing the same thing and claimed that you've never been so afraid in your life. Why aren't you afraid now, Tony? You're smiling. You can't mix kayfabe and reality like this and expect people to take you seriously. You should be afraid of Roderick Stone right now. Roderick Strong. I say Storm, Strong, Storm, it's whatever. Either way, this is ridiculous. Tony just needs to get, stay off camera, period. You can't laugh in the guy's face when he's mad at you. Oh. 1992 called. They want their Reebok pump back. Did these shows, shoes really sell out? I have to do research into that. I honestly cannot believe it. They must have only made 50 pairs. These guys haven't done any good work. He's insulting the crowd, and they laugh. I guess it's because people like to hear Japanese people say the word bitches or make fun of them. It actually seems to be a thing in some audiences. I've noticed that with niche crowds. So they're cheering that they got insulted. Like anything Okada does, they love it. Here again, they even did a You Deserve It chant, but what has Okada done to deserve it? He hasn't wrestled a good match. Poor physique. Like, okay comedy. Mid-promo. So, there you have it. That's the week in review. Maybe we'll start doing more of these. We'll see.